Mi abuela is 85 years old, and since we began social distancing, abuela's distraction has been spent in our living room watching telenovelas y las noticias. I spent my day stuck in my room pressured by writing deadlines and Zoom calls. I try to break down to her how I can still work through the computer and what a Zoom call is, but it goes over her head, so she leaves me alone for a couple of hours until she comes barging in the room reminding me, No has comido en todo el día. We sit down to eat, and through conversation, she explained to me the latest updates with COVID-19. Abuela doesn't understand that through social media, I'm already aware of these updates. Univision gives her tips on how to disinfect the house, precautions she should warn us about when running essential errands. She knows that she's high risk being that she's 85, so she's very attentive to what the news informs her. Trump announced a stimulus check of $1,200 given to every American. Excitedly, she asked, ¿Y nosotros? ¿Nos van a dar? I have to explain to her that undocumented people who file taxes with an ITIN number do not qualify. She shows concern for her comadres because she knows they aren't as lucky as her. She knows she has me, and with my English, I've been essential in helping navigate resources for her. She also heard that Governor Newsom in California announced an eviction moratorium. He gets eviction. I explained to her that this means landlords cannot evict people for not being able to pay the rent. But it does not make sense, because even if you're not able to pay, your rent will accumulate and you will need to pay back rent. For many undocumented people who live paycheck to paycheck, this will create a system in which they will be indebted to landlords. No es justo. Si nosotros trabajamos. Abuela is aware that during this pandemic, undocumented labor is the backbone that is holding America together. These essential workers are the same ones we've seen go viral for being asked to speak English while providing customer service. These are the workers so many opposed to making a living wage with the excuse, if they wanted to make more money, they should have gone to school. As if education did not equal student loans and was a guarantee of making a living wage in this country. These are also the farm workers we essentialized when wanting to prove that brown hands picked your salad. Abuelas comadres are like her, non-traditional workers. They are street vendors, recycle bottles and cans, work cleaning hotel rooms, nannies, or go door to door selling Mary Kay products. She calls them, and when they have questions, she hands me the phone so I can explain to them the resources provided locally. Las señoras are grateful for my intelligence and before hanging up say, Gracias a Dios que te llamé. Thank God I called you. In this same regard, Abuela has placed the uncertainty of this moment in prayer. She sits with the giant print Bible in her lap and with her magnifying glass, she reads scriptures. During this quarantine, she has vowed to read the Bible cover to cover. She says her faith is the sole reason she has been able to survive this country. And I believe her. It takes a divine power, unearthly energy to be undocumented in America. While the rhetoric in this country is that we are the invisible enemy, Abuela and her comadres built networks of support for one another. Through phone calls, texts, and WhatsApp messages, they check in on each other. While the Trump administration weaponizes these moments to vilify us, we prepare for the next battle that lies ahead. The invisible enemy, a group of señoras praying for the fate of the undocumented.